I'd like to call to order a meeting of the Oak Ridge Board of Education. If you would please join me and stand as we honor America and pledge to the flag. Thank you, and you may be seated. We appreciate everyone being here tonight. Thank you for that. And as we move into our agenda, the first item is the approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Ms. Agle, seconded by Mr. Stevens. Any additions, corrections, or comments on the agenda? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is our good news segment. And Ms. Webb, we'll start with you. We have good news from Robertsville. The RMS librarian, Scott Smith, moderated two panels at the Young Adult Library Services Association's annual symposium in Reno, Nevada on Friday, November the 5th. He moderated the virtual panel with authors Steve Scheinkin and Bethany C. Morrow, as well as the live panel with authors Gretchen McNeil, Kimberly Jones, and Gilly Siegel. Scott served as the chair of the symposium's planning and marketing task force. Mr. Stevens. Oak Ridge High, I'll have the first uh, paragraph so here. The AP physics students attended the University of Tennessee Engineers Day events and competed in several events. The quiz bowl team came in second place. The cup stacking team won their competition. The marshmallow tower team came in third. Radiation shielding team won third place and the rocky top stand team won fourth. Ms. McLean. More good news from Oak Ridge High. The Business Academy had six more students earn one or more Microsoft Office Specialist certifications at the end of October. The Oak Ridge High School Library saw a 51% increase in books checked out over the first quarter in 2019. While all areas of the library experienced an increase in circulation, the biggest gains came from the social sciences section of nonfiction, specifically books about philosophy, religion, mythology, social issues, and language. Two other areas with the largest increases were graphic fiction and technology. Also, Oak Ridge uh, High School students were in first, second, and third place at the Oak Ridge Street Painting Festival. The theme of the competition was to honor the Scarborough 85. Ms. Agle. Also from Oak Ridge High School, four students were selected to participate in the All East Tennessee Honor Choirs. On October 26, the Oak Ridge High School cross country team competed in the Region 2 Championship. Beatrice Shea qualified for the state meet by finishing 20th place. The boys team qualified by finishing third as a team. Manny Cruz finished fifth and Jack Bywer finished 13th to earn all region honors. On November 4th, the boys cross country team competed in the Tennessee State Cross Country Championship in Hendersonville. The boys finished 11th with 300 points in a loaded field. And we're gonna go back to Ms. McLean for some more good news from Oak Ridge High School. Okay, Beatrice Shea also competed at the state meet and won um, she competed for the second time in her career, finishing 107th in, in 
the 4K course. Oak Ridge High School social studies teacher Aaron Pickering has published a paper using victory in, in the Pacific in the classroom in the fall 2021 edition of the Journal of Education about Asia. Finally, Elizabeth Desenar came in second for the Community Heroes Award sponsored by Lots Balloon Festival. And that's just some of the news at Oak Ridge High. And I'm going to ask uh, Ms. McLean if she would go to the podium and Ms. Leah Hunter would please join her at the podium at this time. And I'm going to move to Mr. Lay for some more good news. First of all, I feel extremely privileged tonight because I get to be part of the good news, okay? And, and this is good news. You know, you just watch the news, you, you hear stories, and you think about communities, and, and we always say that it truly takes a community to raise a child and to provide what's best for a child. And, and once again, uh, we invited Ms. Hunter to be here tonight because a few weeks ago we had an uh, inexcusable situation that happened in transportation, and we had a student that was dropped off where they should not have been dropped off. And, and basically, Mrs. Hunter uh, was walking her dog, and she saw a first grade student uh, that was a little bit upset. And basically, she just did what we would like people to do, and just speaks well of our community, but especially speaks well of Miss Hunter, and she walked this young lady home. So I just wanted, with, along with the board, just want to give you a huge thank you. We appreciate you, and, and, uh, and it's just wonderful to work in a community where we have citizens like yourself. So thank you so much. And that's just some of the good things that are going on in the Oak Ridge schools. Our next item is our volunteer recognition. Each month, the board receives nominations from our various schools for those individuals who go above and beyond and volunteer to make that particular school special. Uh, without these individuals, many of the things that we're able to do in each of our schools would actually just not happen. So then the board selects a person uh, as our volunteer of the month. Uh, toward the end of the year, we will take those volunteers from each month and select a volunteer uh, to represent the Oak Ridge schools in the Tennessee School Board Association in each district. If selected there, then they would move on to state competition, and we just returned from the leadership conference and convention in Nashville this past week where the state winner was announced, and we always keep our fingers crossed and hope that one day one of our nominees will make it there. We've had several district winners, uh, but we're ready to have somebody uh, to go on to uh, the state recognition. So I'd ask uh, Dr. Ward and Ms. Webb and Ms. Christine Mounts to please come to the podium. We've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Christine's daughter, Clara, and her husband, Brandon, I'm sure, are watching. Uh, the, the goings on, uh, but Christine is incredible. Uh, she first expressed an interest um, in serving on our PTO executive board as secretary, and lots of people like that job because it's not as intense as some others, but we needed a treasurer, and not having a whole bunch of experience, maybe not any at all, she learned all she needed to know about being a treasurer, and she is one of the finest we've had. But being a treasurer just barely uh, is the tip of the iceberg at what Christine does. We just had our fall festival, and I would say that it was our most successful in uh, a long time. And that was a lot uh, because of Ms. Mount's efforts. Uh, she is able to, uh, of course, get people who 
uh, have some reason to care about our school and our students to donate items and help out. But she has a way of getting people who don't have any connection at all to Linden <laughs> to donate things. She's hard to say no to, I think. And uh, just so many ways that she spends her time at the school helping teachers. Today she uh, rolled around the, the, what do you call that, the happy cart? Something like we don't that? Have a name yet. You don't have a name yet. Well, I just named it. Okay. The happy car, because that's how it makes me feel. <laughs> so we all filled out our favorite candy, our favorite snack, our favorite drink, and lo and behold, the happy cart comes by, and you get treated with those items, and that just makes everybody smile. And, and it, it's, it, you know, it's the small things, right? But she is a model volunteer for our school, and Lyndon is really lucky, very lucky to have her. And... I don't know, but uh, I told her that uh, I needed some of those pork dumplings again, and I haven't gotten them yet, so I'm trying. <laughs> All right, she makes some really good pork dumplings. <laughs> All right, oh Christine Mounts. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, and thank you what you do, uh, not just for Linden Elementary, but for our school district as a whole. I would encourage uh, those administrators who are here, uh, we will not be meeting in December, but we will have two meetings in January, so we can certainly do two volunteers that month, so if you would... Uh, Get in, I know you have folks in your building that deserve to be recognized, so if you would get those in uh, before winter break, that would be great. Okay, moving on. Next on the agenda is the public forum. Public forum is for anyone who would like to address a topic that is not on the agenda. You may address a topic that is on the agenda when it is presented. Please raise your hand at that time to be recognized. If you choose to address the board, you will have three minutes to speak. The board may or may not respond to your comments or may have the superintendent address your concerns. When you speak, please come to the podium and sign in and then state your name and address for the board. Is there anyone who would like to address the board at this time? Good evening. My name is Jimmy Chapman, and my six-year-old daughter was the little girl that was dropped off a half mile away from her bus stop in our home on October 28th. I came this evening in hopes that the bus transportation issue would be a topic on the agenda, and I'm greatly disappointed. More than that, I'm disappointed that the community's concerns have had to be taken to the school board in a public forum. <clears throat> Sorry. More than that, I'm disappointed that the community's concerns have had to be taken to the school board in a public forum because the transportation system and school administrators have turned a blind eye to this. As an Oak Ridge Schools graduate, I'm embarrassed to have to bring a safety issue to you all this evening, considering that this should be our number one priority. I'm asking you all tonight to consider this a point of discussion at the next board meeting, if not sooner. And also, I greatly appreciate Leah Hunter for everything she did to save my child's life that night. Anyone else? Um, hello, thank you. I'm really bad at public speaking, but I'm mostly just here for the Chapmans. Um, my son also was 
he's a kindergartner. He was let off the bus without an adult there. He wasn't upset, so I didn't get upset. Um, I thought, I feel like now maybe I should have brought that issue because maybe it wouldn't have happened with this little girl. And I too am disappointed that this, our children's safety isn't the main topic of discussion tonight. There's, I mean, we should be able to invest in our children. Um, there's safety programs and programs that we could use to our advantage to make sure our children are safe. And I just think that it should be a topic of discussion here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Casey Chapman, and my daughter was the six-year-old little girl that was neglected to be dropped off a half a mile away from her house. Um, I came here that just like my wife, hoping that there would be this would be part of the agenda, uh, the consistent uh, wrongful negligent acts that's happened with the school bus transportation, and basically nothing being done about it. Um, you honor we honor, which I'm so very thankful for. But what if she wasn't there? Um, and I think that the, I know they had safety bus meetings with the, with uh, at Glenwood, but they only did that for bus riders. And so they need to instill all the students with that information. My children were bus riders until that accident. They didn't get invited to the safety briefing. Uh, I think it needs to be a reoccurring training with the students, with the staff, with incoming bus drivers. Um, and I would really like the school board to look more into what is going on with the first student program. Uh, what are they doing? What are they not doing? Um, as well, look into your My Stop app that y'all pay for. It doesn't work 50% of the time. That is very good information. I know they make better stuff out there. You have a billion dollar technology company next door you know with the national apps i'm sure somebody can make something thank you thank you Good evening. My name is Brooklyn Carr and I'm here in support of the Chapman family who are very dear friends of ours. As a mother of a six-year-old in the school system, it what happened to Celia absolutely sickens me. But even more, the response of the incident by our administration, by our bus company, has been, in my opinion, lacking. I am saddened that this serious incident has not brought more concern to everyone. I was born and raised here, I graduated from Oak Ridge, and I was very proud to put my children in this school system as well. However, I would be lying if I didn't say that I have seriously questioned our school system's concerns for our children's safety. Their safety is the number one priority, and I just ask you to really consider making this a topic. Thank you. Anyone else? I would like uh, to make a comment. Uh, those who have spoken and any others, uh, I will assure you that from the moment this board was notified by the administration of the incident, there has been ongoing conversation to uh, respond to the incident, to take a look at the incident with the uh, first student uh, organization to see where the mistake was made, why it was made, how it was made, and what can be done to correct it. Uh, this has not fallen on deaf ears. 
the safety of our students is a number one priority and we are continuing to have discussions to this day uh, to make sure that an incident of that type does not occur again and what we need to do to make sure that it doesn't occur again because it was not acceptable I guarantee you it was not acceptable uh, Miss Chapman I know you sent an email that I read I had really hoped that when you got up there you would have gone through some of those things you recommended because I really think there are some good ideas there and I think there's some ideas that uh, we need to put in place and we'll be taking a look at uh, to help in that process of making sure that this doesn't happen again. Uh, you know, people come and speak to the board, but oftentimes it's a rarity when people come and speak to the board and have ideas about what needs to be done. So I appreciate and thank you for doing that as well. Ms. Agle. Well, I just, I would like for Dr. Borchers to tell everyone because to say that nothing has been done is inaccurate. There's been a whole lot done. It does not all require a board vote. The administration does a lot of this behind the scenes. So Dr. Borchers, if you could go through the actions that have been taken thus far. Yeah, I'm gonna actually ask Mr. Lay to do that. He's been handling most of this, but uh, Mr. Lay, would you give us a, a brief summary of some of those action steps? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have worked closely with uh, Isaac, who is our supervisory first student, and, and what happened immediately that day is a monitor was placed on that bus, uh, and we felt, of course, the driver was a new driver, uh, you know, and we talk about training, uh, and, and Isaac can confirm that, that during their training, these topics are addressed. What we had on that specific day was a driver error. We had a new driver, a young driver, that honestly just made the wrong decision and basically in the, the training that that person had been provided uh, those topics are discussed once again new driver made a mistake but moving from that morning we did put a monitor on the bus within a few days we decided that perhaps uh, that that driver's reasoning thinking responding to incidents uh, truly was not the best fit for our younger students so basically that, that driver was pulled off of that route uh, and actually Isaac Walton and, and his assistant ran that route for a few days. Uh, we had a substitute here or there, uh, but we have been fortunate. We now have a driver that was the original driver of that route some years ago that left us came back, a veteran driver experience. So we have assigned that driver to that route. Uh, another thing that we instituted and we talked about is our training too quick when we hire a new driver? Are we not allowing ample time for them to truly get comfortable with the route, comfortable with the students to assure they make the right decisions? So, uh, you know, we are living in the midst of a driver shortage, which has no effect on this, but a uh, first student decided one thing we could do to better train our drivers. When a person comes in and says, now I would like to be a bus driver, basically first student is hiring them to be a bus monitor that day or starting the next day or as soon as their background check clears so and then during that process they'll be riding the bus serving as a monitor seeing how a veteran driver responds to decisions they make but they'll also be working doing the classroom work to get their cdl and their driving work and then and then once again once they do earn their cdl and they're driving the bus they will continue to have a monitor for a short period there to assure that once again they are doing everything they need to do so um, you know, we, we discussed, you know, in, you know, we discussed what was appropriate. We felt like that did address the issue, you know, and I can tell you with confidence that is not a common error. And once again, I agree it's inexcusable, but that is not something that happens every day or every week. Uh, in fact, I can't, I've been in this position for six years and I really cannot recall a situation that, that mirrored what happened that day. It was just a poor decision on the part of the bus driver and once again we're retraining uh, putting this driver with older students we will continue to monitor and maybe that person's a good fit maybe they're not but that decision will be made but uh, but i can assure you in my conversations with, uh, with with mr walton that that student safety is a top concern uh, and we will continue to work together and, and basically provide transportation that keeps our students safe because that is extremely important 
You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Moving on, we'll move on then to uh, the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? Second. Motion made by Ms. McLean, seconded by Mr. Stevens. Please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we move to items for action. First item is a second reading on FY22 budget transfer number two. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the FY22 budget transfer number two. Heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Move, Move to approve. Second. Motion made by Mr. Stevens, seconded by Ms. Zagel. Dr. Borchers. As the chairman has stated, this is the second reading, and primarily this is for our new track that will. Uh, we're almost ready with that contract to get that started, uh, but the biggest account piece there is the $885,000 for the track and then some routine budget transfers and revisions. Comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, please cast your vote on budget transfer number two, second rating. Motion passes unanimously. Item B, proposed budget timeline for 2022-2023. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the proposed budget timeline for 2022-2023. This calendar includes previous year's dates for items unconfirmed by the city. Updates will be made when the city council approves their budget calendar for FY23. Per the superintendent's recommendation, do I hear a motion? Motion made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Ms. McLean. Dr. Borchers. And as the board knows, this, this might be fluid here come, come spring after we hear from the city, but you can see the proposed timeline, and we have already started, as you can see the dates on there and the things that are happening. So we'll just keep moving forward uh, until we hear from the city. Comments or questions from the board? You'll note on there, Lynn, correct me if I'm wrong, here, please. You'll note on there, and we had this discussion uh, last year that there were, during the budget process, when it came time for the board to get plugged in, that there were m almost more meetings uh, than we needed. Uh, obviously, it doesn't mean that we can't come back and add one if we need to, but we've taken one out. We took one out, right? So we've taken one of those board meetings out. I think it will uh, speed up the process a little bit, simplify it, and uh, just make it much more consistent. So the motion is approval of the budget timeline. Please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is the addition of a 1.0 FTE payroll specialist, Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the addition of a 1.0 FTE payroll specialist for the district. Per the superintendent's recommendation, do I hear a motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Ms. Agel, seconded by Mr. Stevens. Dr. Borchers. Uh, the board has a, a detailed memo there. I'll read part of that first uh, paragraph. Uh, after analysis of the business department structure in relation to current operation requirements, we're requesting to add one additional FTE payroll specialist position in the business service office. Numerous factors contribute to the additional job re responsibilities and need for the addition of this position, and that's outlined on the second page that you have. This additional FTE will promote more effective and efficient payroll operations while continuing to provide excellent customer service to our employees. And I'll pull out one sentence of that next paragraph. Annually, 18,225 payroll payments are made to 950 individuals, totaling $62,370,000. So this person, uh, uh, right now, the one person has quite a, quite a job, and we think the addition of the second one with all of the other items you see on the appendix there it will be a worthwhile expenditure for us. Comments or questions from the board? 
Hearing none, please cast your vote for the addition of a 1.0 payroll specialist. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is the naming of the Jefferson Middle School Library as the Robert Moss Library. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the naming of the Jefferson Middle School Library as the Robert Moss Library. Heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Motion made by Ms. McLean, seconded by Ms. Webb. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask Mr. Cox to come forward and uh, to, to present uh, some information for us. Yes, Dr. Borchers, thank you for the opportunity and, and also the board and Mr. Phil Hauer, thank you to uh, allowing me to share a few thoughts. This process started back, by, I guess, before COVID uh, when Mr. Reddick, who was a former teacher and coach in Oak Ridge Schools, um, uh, we had discussions about this multiple times and we resumed our discussions this past spring which resulted in uh, uh, several staff members getting together. I think we have two here, Mr. Jim Dotson and Ms. Hensley, who've been at Jefferson, uh, Jefferson Middle School for many, many years, and I uh, appreciate their support. Um, but they were in agreement that we would like to do something for Mr. Moss. And I'm gonna read you the letter, Dr. Borchers, I submitted to you earlier. The Jefferson Middle School community would like to propose naming our school library uh, as the Robert Moss Library in honor of a treasured educator that served as a teacher and administrator in Oak Ridge Schools. Born and raised in Knoxville and educated at the University of Tennessee, Mr. Moss joined Oak Ridge Schools in 1966 as a social studies teacher at Oak Ridge High School. He serves as assistant principal at Jefferson Junior High High School from 1968 to 1973. In 1974, he became Jefferson Middle School principal, a position he held until his retirement in 2000. During his 30 Three years in leadership and service to Oak Ridge Schools, the system became one of the top school districts in the state of Tennessee, the Southeast region, and the United States. A teacher, a life, lifelong learner, book lover, and leader at heart, Mr. Moss inspired an entire generation of Jefferson Middle School students and teachers to academic excellence. He strongly supported the Jefferson Middle School Library as a place of exploration, inquiry, and scholarship. His legacy continues to shape Jefferson Middle School students and teachers each day. We believe that this honor, uh, this will honor his legacy in education and continue to place emphasis on the importance of education and character that we hope to instill in our students each and every day. Um, again, uh, being there 16 years in a leadership role, uh, working with Mr. Lay for nearly eight years, a lot of things that we do at Jefferson Middle School is a credit to Robert Moss and what he developed over the years. Uh, there's been several influential educators and leaders in Oak Ridge schools. I think Mr. Moss ranks right up there with the top. Uh, I think this would be a great honor for him, and I do sincerely appreciate all Mr. Moss has done for Oak Ridge schools because I look at what I'm able to do and what we're able to do each day and the, the foundation that he laid for all of us. Uh, I'm very grateful to Mr. Moss for his efforts in setting the tone. I can share one little story, uh, one of my first uh, things that I were able to do, Mr. Lay allowed me to go on the Williamsburg trip, and one of the things they do on the Williamsburg trip is they keep the little booklet. Uh, they have to write notes and take notes, and I remember getting on the bus coming from the county. I, I was like, what are we doing here? We're making them take notes on a field trip, and uh, I was informed very quickly by Mr. Reddick, that's what we do at Jefferson Middle School. That is the expectation, and that small little thing that Mr. Moss had started back in the day still continues to this day. Uh, very high expectations, but he was a great leader, and I think this would be a great honor and recognition of Mr. Moss and his efforts uh, in Oak Ridge Schools and Jefferson Middle School. Thank you for consideration. Comments from the board or questions? I, I certainly, uh, I can't think of it. I'm sitting here listening uh, as you read that and thinking you know i've i've known mr moss since my time here in oak ridge that something that i might add to that but you've certainly covered everything that i think and uh what you said that uh think he would i'm sure he would be very pleased that the library uh would be a place to be selected to uh, cement his legacy in the oak ridge school so thank you for that Right, motion on the floor is the naming of the Jefferson Middle School Library as the Robert Moss Library. Please cast your vote.
Motion passes unanimously. Please keep us up to date if there will be some type of uh, ceremony or recognition so we can be there as well. Item A, board policy 5.701, substitute teachers first and second reading. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of board policy 5.701, substitute teachers. For the superintendent's recommendation, do I hear a motion? Motion made by Ms. McLean, seconded by Mr. Stevens. Dr. Borchers. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's a, a few uh, just uh, grammatical changes here, but, but the significance is uh, TSBA recommends updating the language uh, towards the bottom of page one and the top of page two uh, regarding certification for retired teachers. Current policy language states that the State Board of Education certifies. However, that is now the Division of Retirement, so we have updated our policy to say that. Comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, please cast your vote for second, first and second reading policy 5.701. Motion passes unanimously. Informed decisions shift their programs, shift their instruction as quickly as possible. So Blue Granite is going to help us set up um, our Microsoft Power BI dashboards. And then in addition to that, they're going to provide training at both the district and school level so that we may continue the work and add to it. Um, forever. We have PLC coaches now that are pulling in new data all the time. We have more and more to work with uh, each week and so they're going to be able to manipulate the data for their professional learning communities on the spot and that's going to be really helpful and exciting. Questions or comments from the board? Oh, Ms. Agle, sorry. Is this a one-time cost or is there an annual fee? It is a one-time cost for the Blue Granite contract. We have free Microsoft Power BI tools now. If we grow the Microsoft Power BI, we'll probably need some district subscriptions so that we may share that data more and more in the future. Um, that could be a, an added cost in the future with Microsoft Power BI, but no, it's a one-time cost with Blue Granite. Hearing no one else, please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item G, purchase of 95% group intervention curriculum package. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the agreement to purchase intervention materials and related professional development from the 95% group in the amount of $30,847.10. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Motion made by Ms. Webb, seconded by Ms. McLean. Dr. Borchers. Again, I'm going to ask Dr. Williams to give you a little bit more information about this one. This is also an ESSER grant funded item. Um, you may remember that we were required to set aside intervention funds in ESSER 3.0. So this is one of the specific reading tools that we would like to purchase to support um, elementary students in reading intervention. Comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is the purchase of a Ventrac tractor and mowing deck. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the purchase of a Ventrac tractor and mowing deck from Smith Turf and Irrigation of Nashville, Tennessee in the amount of $31,792.99. Per the superintendent's recommendation, do I hear a motion? Move for approval. 
Motion made by Ms. Eagles, seconded by Mr. Stevens. Dr. Borchers. As you can see from Mr. Thacker's memo, this particular tractor is specific, specially designed for operations on steep slope grades that will improve the safety and efficiency of our grounds crew and has a multitude of attachments that are available for ground maintenance activities. Comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item, Head Start Self-Assessment 2021. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the Head Start Self-Assessment 2021. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Motion made by Mr. Stevens, seconded by Ms. McLean. Dr. Borchers. As the board knows, this, this uh, amazing work is done every year. I, I'm just going to read a summary just so our public knows what this is. The self-assessment is a Head Start requirement in which a team of preschool staff, parents, and community partners closely evaluate each service area for the program. Within each service area, strengths and areas to be strengthened are identified. The team that identifies areas of, uh, on which to focus as priority items, and these are the areas in which funding will be an area of focus. And just want to thank Lisa and her team uh, that do this work. It's, it's a lot of work. Comments or questions? Ms. McLean. I helped a little bit with this, and this is a logistical nightmare <laughs> trying to do this during COVID to get all these people and parents and staff all on teams and um, I congratulate Lisa and her staff for getting this done because it was a momentous thing for them to get done. Hearing no one else, please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item J, purchase and installation of clinic casework. Dr. Borchers. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of the purchase and installation of new and replacement casework for district school nurse clinics from Steve Warden Associates in the amount of $68,673. For the superintendent's recommendation, do I hear a motion? Move for approval. Motion made by Ms. Agle, seconded by Ms. Webb. Dr. Borchers. Uh, you can see a great memo there from Mr. Thacker. Uh, just a little bit more information. The replacement casework is part of a remodeling effort of some of our older and smaller clinic spaces in an effort to better serve our students. Remodeling will take place at RMS, JMS, and Willowbrook for expanding the clinic size and Woodland and Linden for upgrading or adding lockable caseworks. And again, this comes from that ELC grant, uh, which much of our COVID testing uh, is paid through. Comments or questions? I was telling Alan that uh, exhibits uh, at our conference, uh, I was talking to this person that's doing this, and I didn't know that she was doing it at the time, and she was telling me about what they do and their information, and I'm thinking, well, that, that, they do pretty good work. And she said, but then where are you from? And I said, oh, oh yeah, we're going to, I think this is going to come up for a vote. And I said, yes, it is. So uh, we've made a good choice here, Alan, I think. Okay, please cast your vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, moving on to items for information, enrollment, and attendance reports. Uh, Mr. Lay, any comments? Yes, sir. I, as, as I looked at the graphs, you know, I saw some positive trends. And, and as, as I have mentioned in the past, uh, comparing uh, our elementary schools, the data is similar to what we did last year. A little bit different. Look at the middle schools due to the schedules we followed last year. But once again, in general, the trends are looking good. And, if you compare this month to this time last year, uh, basically we are up 128 students and 
And as we have mentioned in the past, we're going to try to do a better job here in the next few weeks of trying to determine uh, where did we lose students last year, uh, where did we gain students, and basically try to get a better idea about future growth. Any questions or comments from the board? All right. Thank you very much. Finance report, Ms. Smith, any comments? Any comments or questions from the board? Okay, moving on to items for discussion. Would we'll just point out that the board has completed its self-evaluation and we will be taking a look at uh, areas that we may, may need to strengthen and, and uh, take a look at some things that we're doing or not doing and we'll be doing that uh, coming up in a work session next year. Uh, if we're going to do these self-evaluations, then we need to do more than just take them. Uh, we need to evalu evaluate the results uh, to strengthen what we do as a board. So we'll be working on that uh, in the coming year. Any questions or comments from the board in regard to doing that? I think one of the things that we might want to do and would ask you to be thinking about a as well uh, we've been using this uh, self-evaluation for a number of years and it seems to be working effectively but you might want to take a look at it and I'll remind you of this and see if there are areas that we're asking ourselves to evaluate ourselves on that need to be taken out that are not uh, consistent with what we're doing now or if there are things that may be in, in some of the content area that we need to add something in that we're doing that should be in there. So maybe we just need to, I guess what I'm asking is to take a look at that and see if we feel comfortable with this document and the results that it's providing. Okay, old business, uh, new business, uh, communications, uh, a couple of reminders. As I said earlier, this is our last meeting uh, until the first part of January. Uh, but in December, on December the 1st, we will be doing a board visit to Willowbrook beginning at 8.15. We look forward to that. On December the 14th, uh, uh, Mr. Stevens uh, will be hosting Focus on Education, and I think he's looking toward uh, talking about TCAT and our association uh, with TCAT and uh, how we work with them and the things that they do provide for us and how it benefits our students. Uh, we did have the opportunity, uh, as I also pointed out earlier, uh, Mr. Lay, Dr. Williams, Dr. Borchers, and all members of the board uh, were in Nashville from Wednesday through uh, early Sunday, uh, attending the leadership conference and the convention. Uh, it, I'll have to say it was one of the better ones that we've attended in some time from the, the speakers that we heard uh, to the various opportunities to attend clinics. The exhibits uh, was probably the largest number of exhibitors that we've had ever uh, in the exhibit hall. Uh, I think some of that probably can be attributed. People were just looking forward to getting out and talking to people, which was, was, was a benefit to be able to do that. And I'd like to say, uh, I didn't get to say this uh, uh, on Sunday, uh, but to the board and to the administrators here, uh, I have the privilege of serving for the next year as the Tennessee School Board Association president. And uh, without the support of this board, uh, I would not be able to do that. And I would simply say also, uh, certainly the board and administrators here make me what I am, and I appreciate that. So, uh, any other comments? Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. just before we go, this is a, a time of thanks, and I just want to thank, you know, be thankful that we have such a wonderful school board, executive directors, building administrators, 
but I'd be remiss and someday when I retire I'd like to leave my last board meeting with a round of applause but Miss Pat Smith now I've got a smile on her face uh, this is her last board meeting so I just thought let's leave her with a round of applause and thank her for what she's done Just keep in mind, Pat, we know where you will be, and we will find you if we need you. I knew you would say that. Thank you, Dr. Borchers, for, for doing that. Uh, let me say on behalf of the board, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Have a great holiday season. Be safe. Stay healthy. But please, take some time to reflect, prop your feet up, watch a good movie. You know you have to watch It's a Wonderful Life. That's just a requirement for the holiday season. And the Christmas story, and there's several others that you just have to watch. Please enjoy that. Thank you for everything that you do. Lynn, Richard, and Dave, thank you all for keeping us in tune to the millions of onlookers that we have. Everyone watching, please have a great holiday season. You stay safe and healthy. We want all our students back in school after all the holidays are over. We're not finished with school yet. we still got days left, but we're getting ready to go to Thanksgiving. Uh, have a very peaceful and happy Thanksgiving, and we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>